colleagues. And uh, so welcome to Law of Attraction Live, which is a weekly Wednesday show. We do this every week, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Arizona time, whatever time that is in your neck of the woods. And so I uh, just want to give you a welcome. Today we have a special guest, Rex Sykes. Rex was a guest on my Power of Your Mind podcast. And so if you want to hear what we talked about, because today we're going to talk about something different. We're going to talk about some law of attraction stuff. We're going to talk about why there is so much confusion when it comes to law of attraction. And so let me just give a little bit of uh, Rex's background, just for those of you who are meeting him for the first time and having that opportunity. Um, he has four decades of experience helping thousands of people to transform uh, their minds and transform their lives. His innovations are mind design, which we're going to talk a little bit about your mind design a little bit. He's also a master trainer in NLP and DHE, whole brain and accelerated learning, the law of attraction, of course, what we're going to talk about today. And um, he also has many online programs. He is a professional speaker, a life and business mentor, an educator, an actor, filmmaker. I mean, what don't you do? <laughs> uh, probably a professional dog walker. No. <laughs> And um, he's also the author, creator of um, Attitude Activator, which is also really cool. And he's been uh, featured on Learning Strategies Euphoria program. So I just want to welcome you to the show. And um, for those of you who are watching live, make sure that you drop a comment and let us know uh, where you're watching from, who you are. If you have any questions for Rex, if you want to find out more about you know, law of attraction, and he's going to help clear up some of the confusion that people have about that, because it, it can be a little confusing uh, for some people to understand really how it works, why it works, and, and all of that. So welcome to the show, Rex. Well, thank you so much again for having me again. <laughs> it's great to be with you twice now in the, in the past oh, seven or eight days, and uh, you're marvelous at what you do, and I'm, I'm thrilled, and I'm honored to be here, and I, and I, and I, want to add value to both you and to all of your guests who watch either live or the replay. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, you know what I'm going to do here? Well, um, maybe you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you got involved in a uh, law of attraction. Um, maybe what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and share this out. Um, to a couple of my pages. And uh, so why don't you tell us just a little bit about how, you know, how you got started with law of attraction or, you know, whatever, whatever you feel is pertinent for our audience to know a little bit about you. Well, I grew up in an, in a, in an average middle-class home. I mean, my parents were both doctors and, and I grew up and they supported me in just about anything I wanted to do, acting, you know, theater, craziness, you know, whatever it was, they, they were like, yeah, go do it. They wanted to, I think they believed that, you know, the more exposed you are to the arts and the humanities and the different things, the, the more well-rounded and the better person you are. Mm -hmm. But both my parents were not very positive people. Um, I was told that at a very early age, I had a dark cloud surrounding me and following me around. And you oh know, my goodness. That I was unlucky and probably would never amount to anything. And you know, and I embodied a lot of that. I, I took a lot of that to heart and, uh, and, and struggled my way and fought, you know, resisted it. And, it, you know, and it, uh, around the time I was 25, I injured myself um, in the skydiving accident. Now, today, I live the life of my dreams. I do what I want, when I want, with whom I want, whenever. But it wasn't always like that, as, as you can see. And when I was 25, I injured myself in a skydiving accident, and that led to some doctors misprescribing essentially a fatal dose of medication. And uh, instead of killing me, um, I ended up with amnesia for almost 18 months and screwed myself up. And and um, that led to, you know, all sorts of issues. And, and I drank heavily to, to because I couldn't figure out what had happened. I lost all of my friends during this time that uh, I was on this medication. And 
and uh, destroyed a career and lost a fiance, you know, that, that kind of thing. So what happened for me was that when I decided to reclaim my life, I, I said, I'm going to sit in a chair in my apartment in Los Angeles, and I'm not going to move. I'm not going to leave the chair until I develop the wherewithal, the confidence, the, the inner well-being to go out and, and either win my friends back or make new friends, play my career back or, or do something different. Uh, and I did. And for, for more than six weeks, I sat in my chair. I got up to pee, obviously. I got up to make a sandwich. You know, I did have to shop. But, but, but essentially, all my waking hours were spent sitting in a chair, meditating, visualizing, affirming, you know, trying to get my, my life back in order. And right. um, I discovered what I discovered was, was what I now call directed questions, which is a, a way that you direct your brain. Because while I was sitting in the chair, I would say, you know, I'm screwed up. I am confident. I want to get better. And I think as we talked in your other show, you know, you say every day and every way I'm getting better and better. And you look in the mirror and the mirror was, you know, in a big <laughs> dot. No, you're it's not. Telling you the, it's telling you the truth. Because of what you. Right. Because you need to be able to believe the affirmation and you need to charge it powerfully with emotions. Now, the cool part about that is, is and we talked about Napoleon Hill, so people are going to want to go back and listen to the power of your mind the show. Uh, but Napoleon Hill said, if you can conceive it and you can believe it, you can achieve it. He didn't say you will achieve it. He said, because I can't promise what you will do with what I've given you. In other words, some people work it and they will achieve it. And other people will dabble in it and they won't achieve it. So he said, I can't say you will achieve it until you, uh, you know, until you conceive it, believe it, and then you can achieve it. And so for me, what I discovered sitting in that chair was that I kept saying, I feel good, but I didn't, and I didn't believe it. And I, and I had, and all I did was I focused on the bad stuff. So instead of the affirmations being really powerful and, and, and working, they didn't work. And uh, I, I just felt more in a hole than ever. Until I learned one thing, until I accidented on one thing, I said, you know, why is it that other people can do these things, but I can't? Why? How is it that other people are able to, to feel good, but I feel so crappy? And then I thought, I wonder what I have to do to feel better. What would I need to shift inside myself to make a difference for myself? How would I have to think differently? What would I need to questions? Not the statements of an affirmation or a declaration, but the questions. You see, questions. If, if I said to you, for example, where'd you get that wonderful piece of artwork or it behind you? Where'd you get it? Um, I bought it on eBay uh, several years ago. <laughs> okay, so you know, you didn't say I was abducted by a UFO when I was 12 years old or I play baseball. Your brain <laughs> went, okay, where did I get this artwork? And it found an answer. Now, if I say, where do you live? You say Arizona. It's an informational thing. You absolutely know what it is. If I say, what's the capital of Arizona? You can tell me. I'm not, you're not talking about yes or no questions. I'm talking about the questions that direct your mind. If I say, how much fun are you going to have? You don't know the answer to that. That's true. But here's the cool part. Your brain goes on a search. And your brain keeps searching until it finds an answer, like the tip of the tongue phenomenon. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know the name of somebody or you're trying to recall a movie. And you go, what was, oh, what is the name of that movie? And the harder you try, the more obfuscated it seems to be, the, the more trouble you have getting it back. But you stop, you go on, you do something else, and all of a sudden you go, oh, oh, oh the Godfather. That was that movie I was talking about. Or, yes. or, you know, and it drops in because the brain doesn't stop looking for it. The brain goes on what's called the trans derivational search. You pose the question and your brain goes to look for it. And if it doesn't know the answer, it keeps searching until it finds. And the beautiful part about the reticular activating system and the way the brain works is that when you make something important and you charge it with feelings, the brain then knows, oh, this is important and I should go look for this. See, if I just go in, in every, how will I be better every single day? Well, how will I be better? What could I do to be better? What might I do? Why? What's my big why? How am I doing? Your brain goes, yeah, it's just like everything else. You know, toast, coffee, pizza, water, good times, bad times. It's a, you know. Exactly. But if you go, how quickly can I feel marvelous? And how, how many different ways can I begin to feel absolutely thrilled? And you, you invite it, your brain goes, oh, I don't know. Let's go find out. So if you continue to ask yourself questions, 
So your questions direct the mind. They divide up the world. It's either this or it's that. It knows to go out. What's the five different ways I can feel best right now? Well, I don't know. But I'm presupposing that there are at least five. So I'm sending my brain on a search to go, what are the five best ways I can feel best right now? That is so great. So instead of affirmations, and I don't know why I'm getting feedback. Um, you know, it only happens, it seems, at the very beginning of when I start talking, I'm getting a little feedback. Anyway, um, so instead of saying, preaching to ourselves something that we may not be in agreement with in our deeper mind, it's better than to ask the questions of the thing ultimately that we want. So instead of saying, you know, I am happy and free and, and abundant, which may or may not really register as true in our subconscious mind, we say, how can I be happy, free, and abundant? And how many different ways am I already happy and free and abundant? What am I not noticing that I could begin to notice that allows me to feel absolutely happy or, or absolutely abundant or wonderfully free? In, 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 I wonder how soon I'll begin to notice that in a way that delights and surprises me and puts a big smile on my face and makes me tinkle all over. <laughs> you want it to direct your experience. Now, you can also affirm the reason why affirmations don't work is because, like I said, people are declaring them unenthusiastically. They're, they're not believing them. You don't have to believe the question because no. you don't know. The question. So Napoleon Hill is right. Using auto suggestion, you can come to believe anything. And you, if you tell yourself the thing a number of, you know, over and over again, repeatedly, consistently for long enough with the right emotional charge, you can believe that. Even if it seems like a lie at first, you can bring yourself to believe it. That's why he said you can develop that faith and that certainty. And if you need to do it, you can develop that passion and that and that burning desire in the same way. So the chapter four in uh, in um, thinking grow rich on auto suggestion is an mm -hmm. absolutely valid wonderful positive thing but most people don't one they don't do it they don't do it the way he prescribes they don't do it twice a day or more a day you know and they try it for a little while and they give up and and, and, and they don't have any emotional energy with it they they and actually, instead of having, um, you know, positively charged emotions, a lot of times when we say these affirmations, we're feeling the way that we feel because we don't have it. And so it's actually negatively charging. The, the subconscious mind is paying more attention to the emotions than it is to the actual words. The, the, the words are they're meaningless. You could go pizza, you know, or you could go abundance. <laughs> it, you know yes. I mean? I mean, you know, who cares, right? Yeah, so, that's why I that's why I say, you know, um, and I don't know how you feel about this, but a lot of people want uh, you know, the uh subliminal um, you know, uh, suggestions to work. And I don't really believe in subliminal suggestions. I believe that they may have a placebo effect, but subliminal meaning like below the conscious awareness. And that's because the subconscious mind's not making any um, emotion out of it and it's not visualizing it because you can't hear it. So there's, it has no real impact on the subconscious mind. That's, Would you agree? I, well, I would, I, you know, and uh, I, I think the verdict is always still out on, on subliminals because you can't separate it from the placebo effect. So if people use them and they get better, fantastic. If they use them and they don't, they have alternatives. And that's, and that is the key. And, and, and the, the thing about the um, law of attraction and auto suggestion, the way Hill works, the way I work, what I discovered when I asked myself these questions was if, if you, you can direct your mind out of and into anything you want, mm -hmm. and there is a certain amount of fake it till you make it. In other words, you can use your body. You know, if you're not feeling enthusiastic and you're sitting slouched down and like this and you go, I don't feel like it, you're not going to feel like it. Your body doesn't support your state of being and your state of being isn't enough to, to move your body. But if you shift your shoulders back and you take deep breaths and you shut your chin out, you go, I can do anything. And you go, yeah. I mean, this is what the military does. This is what sports teams do. That's why people go, rah, rah, rah. they work themselves up to get charged so that they have enough energy to do the task that they want to do. Well, the same thing is true with our affirmations and changing our thinking. If, if you are absolutely angry and I go, that's it, that's done, never again, I'm going to do it no matter what, 
that's valid. That's a positive emotional charge to what you're saying is a negative state. It's not negative. It's not going, I can't do it. I suck. I'm going to eat worms. I feel, sh you know, crappy. It's going, that's it. I'm going to do it. That's it, period. I will do it. And that's, you know, and as opposed to I'm going to do it and I feel wonderful and marvelous and so positive and wonderful. <laughs> so you can say I've had enough and have yeah. that emotional charge, or you can say I want this and I'm moving toward it. And in fact, you can do both. You can say, you know, I wonder how soon before I really find that I've had enough, I'm not going to take that anymore, and I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to move toward that and I'm going to fill my mind and my body with glorious feelings and wonderful ways of thinking. And tomorrow is going to be a different day because I'm going to find 50 different ways within me to feel glorious. How quickly and, and easily and soon can I discover this in a way that surprises and delights me and moves me beyond anything I could have ever imagined before? I love this. You know, just so, just so you know, I'm going to replay this. <laughs> And then, I'm, and then I'm going to make a hypnosis program out of this. <laughs> well, this is, what, this is what I did with the Attitude Activator. This is a, yeah. th a thread that runs through all my work. This is my life work. This is okay. directed questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. sure. I, you know, but the, the point is, is that you want to direct your mind to those things. And the same thing is true when it comes to abundance of law of attraction. People sit there and debate whether or not it works. You know, and the law says for every cause, there's an effect. And for every effect, there's a preceding cause. So you have to stop and you mm -hmm. have to say it's not about attraction. It's about creation. Oh, yes. yes. You don't attract things to happen. You make things happen. You don't attract a cup of coffee. You make a cup of coffee in the morning. You don't right. attract a potter, you know, a, a piece of artwork on a sculpting wheel. You make the sculpture on the Thing. You're manifest. But, you're manifesting it. It's manifest, more about manifest. Yeah, it starts here. You think about it, like you know, if you, if you were to have made the artwork behind you, it would first start as an idea. You conceive it. You believe you can do it. You assemble your resources. You get everything together. You make a plan. You get your canvas or your or your metal or your plate or whatever it is. You draw it out. You sculpt it. Or you, an architect uses you know blueprints in order to make a building or a highway, you know, or or a piece of furniture. They plan it out, they, then they get the actual resources and then they bring it forth. Either they build it themselves or they give the plan to somebody else to build or they, whatever. So there's a process that starts with us. It starts with me. And that is I'm 110% responsible for everything in my life. Good, bad, right, wrong. The past that was crappy, the past that was glorious, the present that's crappy because your past thoughts lead you to your present. Your present mm -hmm. does take you to your future. So whatever you're thinking right now is what your future will be. Wherever you are right now is what your past will be. Now, people need to stop bemoaning the past. Mm -hmm. Celebrate the past because it brought you to where you are. And if you're right there going, you know, my love sucks and I I need to change, then thank goodness now that you're, you're at that point. More <laughs> for the future. Right, because now you're at a place where you can begin to change. You can begin to to manifest differently. Whereas if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got, right? The definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over, but expecting different results. Yet that's what we do. And that's why I added one word, which I think makes all the difference in the, in the world for people to get this, and they still don't get this. When the student is ready, only then the teacher can appear. Mm, only then, so you added and only. Only then the teacher can appear. And that teacher is either yourself, circumstances, or a mentor or a guide or a coach. In other words, wh whomever the teacher is, whether it's a self-revelation, whether it's, you know, doing, you know, uh, battle <laughs> or, <laughs> engaging, or engaging with your circumstances or whether a mentor or a guide appears, until you've emptied your teacup so that more can be poured in, until you're ready – you're not ready. You won't notice it. You won't see it. You'll miss the, the forest for the trees. And and that's just the way it is. So if a person is sitting there whining and complaining and, and blaming their past on others or feeling regret and resentment and envy and you know frustration um, and all those things now, when they get to that point where they go, yeah, that was me then and I don't have to do that anymore. Thank goodness. Now I can create something new. That's 
when the lesson appears. That's when they're now open and they can, can begin to manifest incredible things in their life. And that's, exactly. when they get, and that's what mind design is about. That's where they get this moment. They can then begin to design their mind, design their life, create the best life ever that they want to have because they're now open to those possibilities. They can conceive it and using questions and affirmations hand in hand with emotional charge, they can come to believe it, thereby they can achieve it or accomplish it. And the, it's not about sitting in your room going, I wish I had a million dollars. I wish I had a million dollars. I see money raining down on me. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not a bad exercise. There's nothing wrong with seeing the money raining down on you. But ask every millionaire, billionaire, hundred air, hundred thousand air, wealthy person, if they sat in their room and visualized money coming to them, or if they went out and made it happen and, and then do your research, find out what the answer is. And if you meet one person who says, you know, I mean, right. It could be inherited. I get that. You could win the lottery. Somebody could leave it to you. You know, the government would say, Hey, you've got a fortune sitting in, in, in Arizona that you didn't know about. Sure. That stuff could possibly rarely happen, but ask a hundred different wealthy businessmen and women, how they succeeded. And my guess will be not a single one of them tells you that they sat in their room and it just happened for them. That they would be my guess. They will, they may say mindset ruled. In other words, mm -hmm. I adjusted my thinking. I got my, my thinking in order and I went out and I did this and I worked hard. And that's, that's also a caveat. That's a, one of those weird things because well, hard that's work. The thing is it's, you know, mindset's super important. It starts with mindset without the mindset you're not, you're going, not going, going to, to have that uh, that pesky uh, uh, delay again. Okay, now it's gone. Um, <laughs> well, it's one of those things. I, it just distracts me to the point where I can't I can't talk anymore <laughs> when I get that when I hear that uh, I, that delay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it it starts with mindset. I think mindset's so important to the process because without the mindset. Um, you know, you're ultimately go and, and, and it starts with, you know, taking that responsibility and it's not a, the responsibility isn't about the blame or the fault finding. It's about empowerment. It's about, well, if, if, if it's true that I created how it is, then I can create how I would like it to be. A absolutely. And that's in right there. That is worth billions of dollars to some people because for those people who sit there and blame everybody for their circumstance, they're saying, you know, I'm here because of somebody else that's victim mentality. Mm -hmm. And as a victim, you never get anywhere. People say, well, you know, science tells me that I can't change because I was born this way. And I go, okay. Yeah. And you're always going to be looking for something outside of you to make it happen. And that's never really going to happen. Uh, you know, you have to, ask yourself these right questions. And, you know, I, I love the way that you put it though. Um, you know, ask, you know, asking the questions and when the student is ready, only then will the teacher appear. So, um, well, and I have articles out there called why affirmations don't work and, and that address how to use questions or in my daily inspiration and gratitude blog, I've got a lot on directed questions. So if you or your, your, um, viewers, and or mm -hmm. listeners, so the other thing want to find out more about that, they can certainly go there and get it. But but it starts with your thinking. Mm -hmm. Your thinking determines how you feel, and then how you feel determines what you think. So if you think, I can't, you don't feel like doing it. If you don't feel like doing it, your next thought is likely, well, you know, woe is me, it sucks, I'm never gonna be able to do anything. And then right. that's gonna lead to a worse feeling and it spirals down. Whereas if somebody says, you know, I can do that. And if you can't do it, and again, you can take baby steps. This is the other thing that people miss. They go, oh, I can do it. And they don't feel like it. They can say, well, I can learn to do it. I'm discovering that I could learn to do it. If I were to apply myself, I could learn to do it. I wonder how soon I could learn to do it if I were to let go and relax a little bit. How relaxed can I be and how much fun can I have finding out that I can learn to do this? Because as I learn to do it, I can begin to discover that I can do more things because the more we do, the more we're capable of doing because skill comes of doing. So I can ultimately learn how to do something 
and again, in a way that goes beyond anything I could presently imagine right now Mm -hmm. and surprise and delight myself again and again now and in my future. Yeah, and, and again, now you, again, I mean, we are using hypnotic language patterns. We're using pre- presuppositions or assumptions. We're using, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. But for somebody who's, who doesn't know any of this, all they have to do is go, I wonder how good I can feel. I wonder mm-hmm. in how many different ways I can feel better. I wonder how soon I can feel delighted. I wonder how quickly. I mean, just think about what you want. Most people, you say, hey, the law of attraction, if you do affirmations every day, they go, well, how long will that take? <laughs> that's, that's the wrong question. It's not how long it will take or how long do I have to work or how hard will it be or what if it doesn't work. It's, wow, how quickly can I make things happen? How easily oh, can I begin to manage? Oh, my goodness. Yes, they're asking. You know, it's so funny how, like, uh, how, you know, you feel like you, you know, you have an understanding of all the possible questions and possibilities that are going to come up. And then somebody like you comes along and answers a question along standing question how long is it going to take there's a, that that's a wonderful answer to that question is you're asking the wrong question well why not how how soon can i make how it happen how, how can easily I make, can i make it happen how much fun can i have while i'm making it happen what will i discover while i'm making it happen that thrills and delights me i mean in other words what well, is it that you want and what people manifest is all the crap because they haven't clarified what they want. If they said, what I really want is this, then they would know what questions to ask. They would know where to direct their mind to get it. Right. Well, because the the word long in and of itself is a suggestion that it's going to take long. Right. And you're also focused. It's a, it's, it's a negative word rather than a positive word, long versus short, (laughs) not necessarily or quick. Um, Well, and what, and you're right. I mean, you are so spot on. And what people need to realize is that they are affirming negative things all the time. This will be tough. I'm not going to be able to do this easily. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to come along and screw me up. You know, if I could do that, if the banks didn't do this, or if the government didn't do that, or if the weather doesn't do something, there's <laughs> all sorts of conditions that are being put on things. I, you know, I want to go fishing if it doesn't rain. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you said, I'd love to go fishing and I wonder how much fun and delight I'll have. And if it rains, I wonder how many different things I could discover myself doing that would be equally as fun. Why be disappointed that you can't do it if you could do 50 other things that might make you feel better? See, people put their hat on one peg and then they act as if that's the only thing that matters. When if they can get to another peg that's right next to where the hat was and they can make that happen and they have more fun, then people stop. This is why in the Power of the Mind show, I said people stop themselves with a thought. That's what limits them. And they don't, just like how long, you know, is a way of saying, it's not gonna take it fast and quick and smooth. It's gonna take a long, maybe arduous time. You exactly. know, when, and you know, when you climb a mountain, not mountain climb, like rock climbing, but when you, when you hike up a mountain, same thing is true when you bike up a hill, they tell you to look at your feet or to look four or five feet ahead of you at the ground. Don't look at the peak and how far you have to travel because then you notice the distance is great. But if you're always looking at your feet, it's just one step at a time. And then pretty soon you're there. So you, you pay attention to the thing that's in front of you. And again, going back to the law of attraction, people put their goal out there. I want a new house. I want a new lover. I want a million dollars. I want this, that, and the other thing. And then they notice how far away that is and what they don't have and how long it might take and, and what they have now versus what they want. And they focus on lack and they mm-hmm. focus on not having, and they focus on it's a poverty mentality, and they focus on all of that, and they're not focused on it. Like when we say that, people aren't sitting there going, "I am poor, I am poor, I am poor, I am poor." Although that is what they do without realizing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not. They're, nobody's going. Go focus on how poor you are, and they go, "Okay, I will." They just do it automatically because that's how they're brought up. They're they. I was brought up that way. You know, I had a dark cloud following me around. You know, I couldn't see myself succeeding, but I could see myself failing really easy. I had to train myself to be able to see myself succeeding. I had to build those pictures in my head over and over and over again where I could say I could be happy, I could be successful, I could be loved, I could be all these things because I did naturally come by it given whatever. Right. So if you know, and if I can do it, anybody can do it. I mean, that's that's. The, I mean, if I, if I, little old me, can do this, you know, nothing special, then anyone can do it. They got smarter people than I am, better people than I am, 
more powerful people than I am. They can do it. So never let a thought stop you. Create cool. what you want. So what would you say is like the number one thing that confuses people when it comes to law of attraction? The difference between attracting and creating. They think that they can just wish it and somehow it's going to attract. I, yeah, if people say, well, hey, Delon. I was just saying hello to Delon who oh, joined us. He said, hey, hi, folks. Yeah. <laughs> hi, hi, folks. Hi, folks. Um, What's good? What, what people tend to do is they think that it's magic. It's like wishing, you know, it, 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 I hear I, I, a friend of mine, you know, like crossed me off of Facebook going, Oh, you've gone off the deep end because you say, if I think it, I'll become it. Well, then how come I'm not an 18 year old girl? <laughs> and we kind of address this in the power of the mind. You, you know, you work within the law of reality. If you're a male, you're not going to become an 18 year old girl. I mean, maybe you could think yourself into a sex change, but the point being is that, you know, you're not going to fly. You're not going to do these things. And and attraction. What you're doing when you attract, and and there is there is truth to it. But but the but the point that people miss and why it doesn't work is because they focus on the attraction part, not the creation part. Mm -hmm. When they think about attracting, here's here's the thing. When you look in a mirror, what you see in the mirror is a reflection of you. You don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. Mm -hmm. yes. so if, if you make a sour face in the mirror, what you see back is a sour face. If you smile in the mirror and, and shower the mirror with love, then you see somebody sh smiling and showering with love. Same thing is true about the law of attraction. It, it's who you are that attracts. So when it says you can attract others and events and people and circumstances, if you're vibing high, if you're filled with love and you feel generous and you feel abundant and you feel happy and you're enthusiastic and all, you're going to find those people who want to be around you who are of a like mind, birds of a feather flock together, like attracts like, you know, that kind of thing. Exactly. You may, you may also find some stragglers, you know, who go, wow, that guy's, that girl's cool. You know, I want to be with them. But the point is you will attract them. And the same thing is true with the circumstances. When you're high vibing and you're out there, you can go back to Napoleon Hill, you can go back to the Upanishads, the Vedas, you can go back to Pantajali, you can go back to Buddha, you know, you can go back to the Bible, you can go to the Quran, you can go to every ancient text and then the modern, you know, versions of that. And and every single one of them essentially somewhere in there says, you know, we're all energy, we're all thought. You know, as a person th feel, thinks in their heart, so they are. You know, if you go into the Bible, which I love, it's just tons of promises about if you, uh, you know, so some people will put it outside on a God and that's their business. But I think it's more an allegory for what goes on inside our mind. So if, if two join together and agree upon anything, so it shall be done. Well, what is that too? It's your head and your heart. If your head and your heart are aligned, you can have anything you want. If you are your head and your goal are aligned, you can have anything you want, you know? And so, or, you know, you can read texts that say, you know, what you want wants you as much. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, I mean, there's so much we could go into, but the, but the point being is um, when it comes to attraction, if you're living fully and you're feeling grateful and you're thankful and you're expressive and you're confident and you're doing those things because you create that in yourself through questions or through affirmations, or through visualizing, through the repeated work that you need to do. You up your vibe rate. And when you up your vibe rate, you attract more wonderful things to you. Mm -hmm. um, because if you think about it, most people. I just attracted a cat. <laughs> I can, oh, hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. How are you? You get it. Um, most people, you know, if you look at their present, if they look at their present circumstances, you could, you could look back and see how they made that happen. You know, you can't, you can't connect the dots forward, like those little puzzles of the dots and you, and you draw, you know, as you draw, it becomes a figure, a picture. Right. You can't, you can't do it. You can do it backwards, but you can't do it forward. So you, you can look back and go, oh, I see how I got here. Well, if, if, if you keep doing that, you're going to end up in the same place in the future. So yeah. you need to change what you've done to get here in order to get there. Unless you like what you're doing. If you like what you're doing and it's paying off, then by all means, keep it. That something is working. But if it's not working, then you need to change it. And that that's, makes sense. And that's what most people miss. 
then they give something a little bit of try and they do a little bit of this and do a little bit and they go, it doesn't work because that's how they're conditioned to think. If they don't, right. if it doesn't work once or twice, give it up and try something else. Just keep trying. It's, and, and, you know, I, I've taught a lot of NLP, but believe me, how is not as important as why. No, definitely not. So, I mean, and that's one, one of the reasons why uh, law of attraction doesn't work for a lot of people is because they get caught up in thinking about the how. And when their how, um, you know, when maybe they try one thing and that particular way doesn't work, then they just give up because they're caught up in, well, if it doesn't work this way, then it's just not meant to be or it's not going to work. And, you know, they, they get caught up in the how. Would you say that that would be one of the reasons why people fail? Or what would you say is like the number one reason why well, people fail to get what they want? Yeah, because I think... It, it, People, if you nut and bolt it, you're missing the point. When when I do a training or I work with people, I don't want somebody to know how to use a hammer. I want them to have the mind of a carpenter. I don't mm. want somebody. I don't want somebody just to know how to break an egg or measure, you know, uh, a cup of water. I want them to have the mind of a chef, like a symphony conductor can put all the pieces together, you know, because each component is important, but it's the overall gestalt of everything that matters. A movie director, same thing, works with visuals and sounds and creates an experience, but it's the entire experience that matters, not the one thing. If you only have a hammer, you treat everything as a nail, they say, right? So, so knowing how to do something is fine, you know, I mean, it's good. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't know how to do things, but when it comes to the law of attraction, it's truly more about who you are and, and what you cause, what that effect is. In other words, are you causing good things to happen? Or are you causing not such good things to happen? Are you, are you feeling love and fulfilled and attracting love and fulfillment or are you not? And, and this is the thing, if you're not getting the results you want, you got to stop and clarify what it is you truly want because people say I want a million dollars, but they don't, they just don't want to be poor anymore. They don't want to be broke. They don't want to struggle. They don't want to have to pay bills. They don't want to see the bill collector at the end of the month. Those are the things that they're running from. And, and they say, but I really want to be rich, but they're not really wanting to be rich. They're just not wanting to be poor anymore. Now you can use that again. If you go, okay, I don't want to be poor anymore. That's it. Period. I'm not going to be poor anymore. And I'm going to do those things to make me rich. And you then turn and shift and move in that direction. What the law of attraction does is that that if you want to be rich and it wants, you know, it's, you create this kind of pull where it draws you to it as much as you move toward it. Because because it's this, it's this, it's this burning desire. It's this passion. You believe it. And again, going back to Napoleon Hill, his thing was, I'm going to make it happen. It's right. not, I hope I'm going to be rich. I want to be rich. I hope someday I am. It's I will do that no matter what. I will be that. I will have that. I am that. In fact, I am rich already. Now it's just a matter of me figuring that out, you know, me yeah. catching up to that. You well, know, I think the question to ask ourselves more importantly than how is is why, you know. So when, you know, when a person um, has this uh, desire to have a lot of money, and it's, I mean, it's a fine desire to have. I think, you know, all of us um, are meant to enjoy everything that this earth has to offer. And it requires money in order to have that. And I think money is a good thing. But if you just want money for the sake of having a bunch of dollar bills um, all over your desk or all over your bed or all over the floor or in your bank account or whatever, that's not uh, a heart centered enough reason that's in your head. But what in your heart is, you know, is it that you're trying to fulfill in order, you know, it, that, that, that you believe that money is going to fulfill that and you want to go deeper. You want to ask yourself, why do you want it? And, and keep asking that over and over until you get to the heart of the actual reason why you want it. And I think it's a lot different than what most people think is, you know, their surface layer of, of why they want it. I mean, you could say I, I want it because I, I want to drive a luxurious car. Great. You know, there's a reason that's, you know, how is that going to make you feel? And 
you know, we, so we really want to get to the something that causes some sort of an emotion to happen. Yeah, and 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 you know, not wanting something, I don't want this, leaves you with what do you really want then? Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be poor, what do you want instead? If you don't want to have the bill collector after you every month, what do you want instead? So it's that it's learning how to shift. And if you ask yourself, why do I want it? Why do I want loads of cash? <laughs> the answer is to drive a luxury car because I, I've never had one. I really want to drive it. That's an experience that would make me feel wonderful. Then you're more bound or apt to get it. If you go, I want loads of cash because I want to be able to take care of my kids. I want to make sure that they go to school. I never want them to have to work. I want them to learn responsibly, but I want that back behind them so that I know they're well taken care of. I want to treat my friends to things. I want to be able to be the life of a party. I want to be, you know, whatever it is that trips your trigger and gets you the most emotional juice and not passing juice, not like, Oh, you know, I'd love it because I could party one night, you know, and then, and then it would be over. It's something that, that is aligned with who you are and what your purpose is and what the purpose is for having large amounts of cash. Yeah. Exactly. People, people don't clarify stuff for themselves. They just, they, but they've never been told. Here's the thing. None of us have ever been told what to do or how to do it. We stumble into the law of attraction later in life. We learn about this, you know, if you ask a millionaire, for example, or a person who's well off millionaire, by the way, now is, um, you know, poor <laughs> by some standards. Right. Uh, Rex, uh, we got a question um, from, is, yeah, from many. He, uh, she says, what is your take on the vortex? That it's a vortex. <laughs> I don't I don't know what the question means. What is my take? Do I agree? Do I not agree with it? Do I what do I think about Abraham Hicks? Um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fabulous. I think I think it's truly fabulous. It's another yeah, as in how Abraham tells it. I, well, I think it's fabulous. I think it's I think it's a way of understanding things. Remember, words are merely descriptions and everybody has a different description. If you if five of us, for example, uh, fell asleep, you know, in a garden and we woke up like I was face down in the dirt and, and you were on your side, Maddie and, and, and Victoria, you were lying with your, looking up in the sky, you know, and another person was sitting with their back against a tree and you were asked, what were your first impressions? I said, well, waking up was very dark and earthy, kind of, kind of dusty, musky kind of thing. You might, uh, Maddie say, uh, well, I was lying on my side. I saw all this beautiful array of different colors and wonderful flowers and, and greens and, and dark woods and things like that. And you, Victoria, looking up the sky, might say, wow, it was this beautiful blue expanse and brilliant golden you know, colors with some white, you know. And the person sitting on their back against the tree might be saying, well, I saw these things, but I felt really supported in, in this firmness. You know, we all describe things differently, but we're all describing the garden. And so Abraham Hicks describes it in, in a way that makes sense for Abraham Hicks to describe it. I think it's a beautiful description. I think what we lack sometimes are, I, I think in, in many ways, um, that description is better than a lot. A mm -hmm. lot of them. I think I, I, I really do. I think, I think that, the, that um, it's well worth studying and well worth knowing and well worth understanding. But beyond back in the seventies, there's a book called stranger in a strange land. And it was about an alien who came down and, and lived in this country and essentially became a kind of a politic, political figure, you know, cause celeb kind of thing. And there was a word called grok. And I, if you old enough, you know, the word people say, I grok it. It, it kind of meant you imbibed it at every level of yourself of your being. It wasn't just a mental understanding if to grok something was like to digest it, to like eat it. And there's no, there's no way to describe the word grok. You either grokked or you didn't. And so, um, and that's how I think about these descriptions, like the law of attraction or Abraham has more grok potential than, than some others. Gotcha. Um, um, now, would you say good, that- Great questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Manny, for your question. Um, and we'll let us know if you have any others. So I have a question. Um, you know, d is it difficult to manifest? Well, what's presupposed in the question? Difficult. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if the word includes difficult, then you're likely for me to say yeah or no. 
But here's something, what's behind the question? This is something that a lot of people don't do. In other words, mm -hmm. what's the question behind the question or what's the feeling behind the question? Some people will ask a question and the feeling behind the question is different than what the question implies. They could go, I feel so frustrated and you know, when are we gonna have ice cream? You know, but what's, what's, <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's the feeling behind the question? The feeling is frustration, but the question is when are we gonna have ice cream? So, so um, is it difficult to manifest? Yes and no. To to one person it may be, and to another person it isn't. The the probably the uh, I mean that's the caveat to everybody. The the true answer is no. We're manifesting all the time. You know everything we're doing, we're manifesting. We're seeing through our eyes. We're manifesting. We're creating a reality in which that reality is either rich and abundant, or it's, or it's lacking, or it's poor. We're either creating problems, or we're creating solutions. We're creating good times or bad times. We're, we're creating tiredness and we're creating energy. We are constantly manifesting. We can't not, not manifest. So no, manifesting isn't hard at all. It's just right. directing where you manifest. And, and what, and it's just like, you, you know, you can't go East looking West, you know, and if you drove East and then turn around went West and then turn around went East, it'd take you a long time to get there. But that's what a lot of people do. They just don't go I'm going to shift my attention from what isn't working to what is working. And, 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 and that's what we all need to learn. This is why there are people like me and people like you, why we have programs, why we offer things to people, because if we've discovered something that's working, we want to be able to share that for other people so they too can make it work because some, there's a lot of confusion around these things. There's a lot of confusion out there and there's a lot of confusion inside people. Yes. So that, makes so, that, make, that makes so much sense. I mean, what you're saying basically is, um, you know, we're always, you know, law of attraction is always working and we're always manifesting. Like the gravity is always working. Yeah. So, so the question is really, um, is it difficult to manifest what you want? Well, it is if you don't manifest what you want. It is if you put all the <laughs> stumbling blocks in front of you. If you're not focused on what you want, and you're paying attention to other things. So, yeah. But yeah. no, I, technically it's not. you got to realize that it's just as likely that you could manifest wonderful things as you could manifest crappy things. You know, your day could be just as good as it could be bad. It's, there's nothing saying it's going to be one or the other. We determine what it's going to be by what we choose to focus on. If you get up in the morning and decide, all I'm going to look for today is smiles and happiness and everything else, might you find a frown? Might you find somebody yelling and screaming or giving the fingers to people? Sure. But if you get up in the morning saying, I'm going to look for frowns and hatred and animosity. You're going to find a lot more of that. <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to readily find it. And will you might find a, a smile or, a, or now here's the thing. Here's where energy and everything else. You, you can make the argument that negativity is a heavy energy and positivity is a lighter energy. It's a higher frequency. So the heavier the stuff is, this is why when people feel depressed or bored, they're lethargic, they're apathetic, they don't feel like moving their body around. When they're up and they're feeling wonderful, they feel like dancing and singing and jumping and doing all these things because they have all this energy. So, so if you're concentrated on finding frowns and animosity and you're steeped in that negative energy, it's much more difficult than if you are steeped in positive energy. So you have to learn how to be able to make that shift and you have to learn how to be able to direct your mind and how to get over limitations. People will say, well, you know why the secret doesn't work? They have a secret inside the secret that no one ever told you. It's because, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like we talked about self-sabotage. Well, it's not self-sabotage. It's not, it is limiting beliefs and it, there are blocks and there are those things, but all of those things work perfectly well to keep you who you are and alive and on the planet. And if you're here today listening and you go, wow, I had never thought about that. I could right now begin to change and transform my life. Now you're opening up to a possibility. I could begin to attract and manifest what I want instead of making it difficult. Now you're opening up, you know, and again, it's kind of like your teacup has to be emptied in order to put tea in it. And a lot of people approach this stuff with dogma and religiosity and political stuff, science, everything else. It's their teacup is too full with all this, you know, misogyny of, of crap for them to be, wow, you know, I, right. I, I I make a lot of crap happen in my life. And if I can do that, I am truly amazingly powerful. I just Except wanted to mention uh, or from before, um, Meta said, I've seen that place where everything I ever wanted to do is complete already. Awesome, awesome, yeah. And that, is, and that true, it's, it's, you attract who you are 
not what you want. If it's complete already, that's who you are. That is your future. That is your present. This is why, again, another reason why people miss. They're so busy complaining about their present not being what it could be because it's not the future yet that mm -hmm. they aren't sitting here going, well, you know what? I have a laptop and it's so amazing. Do you know how many wonderful things I could do? I've, I'm communicating with Victoria and the world right now. And Matt just commented, I could never have done that a few years back. You know, this is amazing. It you know, is amazing. I mean, but that's just one example of one thing. You know, my point is if we were truly grateful for every, if, if, if every second of the day we went, thank you, thank you. Somebody gives you a finger. You went, thank you. You <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, in other words, why not? This is what life is offering you. Why do we think it should be different than what's going on? You know why? Because until human consciousness came on the planet, there was no good or bad or right or wrong or anything. It's just what it is. And this is what people miss all the time. Mm -hmm. What is, is. And then what the people try and do is change what is to be something else. When you say, I see this complete and already, then that opens the doorway for that to be fulfilled. When you're thankful, when you go, oh my God, you know, I have a pair of shoes. I love shoes. This is so incredible. I have a hat or I have, oh, I love my hat. I love it. When you're thankful for each and everything in your life, even the crappy times, when everything is a blessing, you live blissfully. And if you're living blissfully, guess what? You're high vibing. And if you're high vibing, all those things that were difficult for you when you're low vibing and negative suddenly become much easier. So the Absolutely. trick is how to vibe high. And that's what you need to learn on a daily basis because it's not you do it once and it's done. It's not a magic pill. It's not an instant on TV where it's just there. It's it, it, Transformation can happen in an instant. But for most people, it's a journey. You plant a seed, you nurture it, and ultimately you harvest it. You know, Absolutely. And so, but if you plant it, you can be sure that you're going to get it. You know, if you plant corn, you're going to get corn. You're not going to get pumpkin. You know, so this is, this is what... There's a lot to this, and we don't have a whole lot of time, you know, left. But I mean, it's it's such a beautiful, the world is such a beautiful place, and what people focus on is not the beauty most of it. They focus on the politics and the crime and the you know the the religious intolerance and the hatred and the you know and all that. Speaking yes, of that, that was, speaking of that, what would you say? What would you say? Some of the blocks or limitations are that people need to eliminate. Well, distractions in general this is a huge one because nobody realizes how truly distracted we are. When the world was a much simpler thing, you know, and you had the Zen monks and the Buddhist monks and the, you know, the ninjas and the, you know, all that, you know, there was, there was, we were inundated by so many things. It was said at one time in human history, you could know everything there was to know at that time. You could have access to every, all of, all of information. Um, that w isn't true. So now, instead of being singular-minded, of, of mindful is just a brand name for meditation. But instead of being mindful, and and of singular focused and and pointed at our goals and and creating the life that we want and and being happy and healthy and all that, we we're distracted. We're, we live in boxes and we travel in boxes and we go to boxes to work and we have artificial lights and we have media bombarding us and billboards and music and brands that we wear and, and all this stuff. And then politics comes up and we are divided in this and divided in that. And there's TV and movies and all that kind of stuff and the songs. I mean, we are literally bombarded 24 seven with massive amounts of negativity and negative energy. That's all just constantly swirling around there and we just gossip and all that. So we're not truly, dedicated in many ways to to what we you know think about these people who sit up in the himalayas you know and in, in the top of the mountains and they've learned to stay warm by focusing their mind well if you didn't have anything to do you could do that <laughs> you know what i mean and, sure. and so now we're so distracted one of the keys is claiming your life back getting rid of the distractions eliminating it and you can't travel you can't you can't we can't get rid of cell phones and cell towers and radiation and you know all the stuff we're bombarding but we can claim our life back. We can read more of the inspiring things that help us out. We can visualize, we can affirm, we can do daily rituals. We can make it a practice to do things throughout the day. We can learn to celebrate. We can steer our mind in the same way we would steer a big ship, you know, towards, towards the destination that we want, but then we have to stay on course 
and not go, oh, well, I want to get to Tahiti, but meanwhile, I want to go to Australia, then I want to go to Canada, and I want to go here. Because go <laughs> you never get there. That's But that's what happens. So we got to eliminate those distractions. Cool. Yeah, it's learning how to, to, to focus your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And design your so, mind. And, and that is the next question I wanted to get to, because you have uh, talked about a little bit about mind design. When I introduced you, I mentioned that you have um, this mind design. So can you share a little bit about that with us? Well, mind design is about everything we've talked about from using the directed questions, you know, the attitude activator. It's about creating the inside of your head so that the outside world begins to be a ref it is a reflection of what's on the inside, but it's making the inside so wonderful that the outside pales by comparison, that you enjoy life more fully because what you create on the inside, you look through those filters and the, you, by doing so, you eliminate and you do it in a fun and, and delightful way. And you do it a little bit at a time. It's kind of like an exercise program where you condition yourself for success. You know, um, you don't walk into the gym, pick up a dumbbell, lift it one or two times and go, okay, I've exercised for the year. <laughs> you, know, you know that it's a little bit of daily conditioning. So Mind Design is a daily conditioning process. Um, and it's online right now. And it's it's what we do in in steps. You know, you, you get like module one, module two, module three, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And then mm -hmm. there's a support group that, you know, is a secret support group on Facebook. and, and Secret that support group. <laughs> my, my, my design is also everything. I used to run all of my programs, accelerated learning, my meditation programs, my NLP and DHE programs, mm -hmm. all of that was run through Mind Design. So it was the umbrella through which I taught my programs, which made them different. I have the Ultimate Homes NLP Home Study Program that's been out for, you know, many, many years. It's been pirated all around the world. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, <laughs> You know, and and how to get people to do what you want, and I had a lot of audio programs and different things for many many years. Um, all of these are run through this filter of of mind design because mind design is a larger piece. It's kind of like the difference between values and rules, and and how you you know what I mean when I say that. For example, you know, what's what's important to you? Exercise is important to you. So if exercise is important, what do you have to do to have health? Like you know, what 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 what's important to you? Health. How do you have health? Got to exercise. Well, how do you exercise? Well, you you lift weights or you do calisthenics. In other words, the calisthenics and the lifting weights is a smaller piece of exercise. And exercise is part of what you do to get health. What else do you do to have health? Well, I have to eat right. You have to have a, well, how do you eat right? Well, you have to have a certain nutritional program. Some people think you shouldn't eat meat. Some people think you should do this. Some people, so there are tiny little steps that lead to a bigger piece that go up to this thing called health. So my design is like the umbrella and then the steps and the procedures and the methods and the principles are all embodied within that. Got Maybe it. Maybe more than you want to know, but I mean, in other words, it's, it's a truly remarkable, wonderful way to get over your limitations, your blocks, your obstacles, and begin to skyrocket your results by learning how to change your mind, shift into the positive, and, and, and claim it back to create your best life ever. Very good. Well, thank so, you so much. So, so uh, let me tell you two things, but let me, I mean, yes, I know you're about to close sure. and I'm going to keep you going, but let me tell you two things. Sure. In order to find yes. out about mind sign, they, they yeah. can email me at create your best life with rex at gmail.com create your best life with rex at gmail.com i'm going to put this on here create your best life with rex i think that should make rex sure that's what it is at gmail.com okay uh, i'm showing that i never know you know because i don't i don't handle that aspect of it but but or they can go to daily inspiration and gratitude you know, create your best life with rex at gmail.com i think that's it uh, or they can go to daily inspiration and gratitude.com that's my blog daily, daily. inspiration and gratitude.com dot com and there gift. yep they'll see a thing for free gift they'll see a thing for my design they'll see store or, or pro but Do that's not, yeah okay well the free gift is for the free gift but my design it'll say Oh, 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 oh. That's okay. Okay. No, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, because I want people to get a free gift. If you want to get a free gift, you get a free audio. It's called What's Stopping You? It's How to Get Over Blocks and Limitations. It's from my forthcoming book, um, which we'll talk about in you know, another time. But the point is, um, dailyinspirationgratitude.com, there's a pull-down menu for mind design, and you can go get the information for that. It'll tell you to email the, you know, the right email address, but there'll be some information there. There's also transformational products. There's the free gift that people can get, and I encourage them to do that. Anybody who listens to this live or, or um, uh, in the replay should should go and get their free gift. 
And then I'll also put those uh, as uh, live links um, in the comments area so that they, um, all, all three of these um, that we just talked about, I'll put those in the live links so people can uh, get more information about mind design and also get the, uh, the free gift on what's stopping you. And uh, yeah, so this has been very, very informative. You are just a, a world of information on law of attraction. And uh, thank you so much. I learned a lot. I know my audience learned a lot. And, um, you know, we're learning and growing every day. And, uh, you know, the big takeaway, uh, you know, for me and everybody um, who is watching this live or watching the replay, if you could also put in the comments area, what your big takeaway was uh, from today's conversation. That would be awesome. Um, but, you know, for me, it, you know, the, one of the big takeaways was, you know, to that, that law of attraction is, is always working and it's mirroring basically who we are. It's just showing us, it's really just showing us, it's a feedback system, really. It's just showing us who we are. And, um, you know, a lot of people just kind of get it confused with, with it being this, uh, this, this magic thing, you know, that, uh, you know, you put something out there and that, you know, something different from you is going to show up. And the thing is, is you have to rise to the, uh, vibration of the thing that you ultimately want to show up for you. You have to be that thing. You have to, you know, the attraction is in the thoughts. It's in the, it's in the energy the the like energy is attracting like energy, but it's not going to manifest things out of the blue that you are not showing up as you have to show up as the thing that you want. So that's my, that was my takeaway from, from oh, today. That's awesome. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. If I may add something. Yes. I would like to, because it's, it's, it's a critical piece. We didn't get to talk about it much, but, but people will always talk themselves out of things the way they always talk themselves out of things. Yes. Because that is the prior conditioning. So, you know, if you're about to accomplish something big, oftentimes you get filled with fear or doubt or uh, excuses or blames. If you're about to, uh, make your dreams come true or you're about to embark on a new program or you think, you know, I should do this. Um, then everything comes up that says, Oh, you can't do it. You're stupid. You, you failed before. You're not going to be able the to limiting do it. beliefs, the limiting beliefs. And it's just designed to keep you the same as you've been. That's the protective mechanism of the brain. This is what I talk about when people call it self-sabotage. It's just your way of staying safe because your brain's job is to keep you safe and to keep you alive. So instead of going out and adventuring in new ways or doing things, uh, your brain goes, whoa, whoa, put the brakes on. Let's just check this out. And it relies on all those familiar thought habits that you've done in the past to keep you the same. So it does mean that you can, you need to be able to uh, suspend that. And, and, and literally, this is what we're talking about doing is learning how to suspend that stuff. So when it comes up, it comes up for me. Even now, even today, you know, 40 years later, when, when, if there's something new that I've never tried or ever done, there's this stuff that comes up and goes, well, you maybe you should, you know, don't, not what, and I have to go, oh, wait a second, that's just that, and that's just this, it's not really me, those are just the thoughts that run on and on and on anyway. Yeah. So learn how to get out of your own way is a huge, learning how to get out of your way is a huge piece. If you're in your way, if you stop, now, having said that, if you're doing something stupid, or unsafe, you want that voice to be there. <laughs> Wait, think about this. Don't just exactly. do that. You know, don't just put your money, all well, your money into you know. It's homeostasis. Yep. The the and and the the subconscious mind is designed to keep everything in homeostasis. Yep. Um, yeah. That's our it's our stress. It's you know protect. It's protecting us. Um, and so anything anything that's viewed as a change, it's going to fight against. That. And so we also, so we have to present things. That's why we have to change the beliefs in our subconscious mind to, in a way, kind of trick the subconscious mind into believing we already have that thing so it can keep that the same. Well, exactly, exactly. And, and this is where I differ from all these other, you know, so-called gurus out there who, who say that's self-sabotage because it's not sabotaging you. It's, it's working on, in a benevolent it's protecting way. protecting you protecting on your behalf and you yeah. need to learn how to befriend and understand the mechanism 
uh, and understand homeostasis and work with it, not against it, because what you resist persists. Ooh, right. I heard that. But what <laughs> but the tiny little microphone made so much noise. That was amazing. It's uh, crazy. Um, but, Mehdi but, uh, wanted to know um, if you could share one of your most surprising manifestations. I'm going to give you a little one. I'm going to give. Okay. I, I, I may have talked about this, and if I did on your other show, let me know. But. But I like to do, because, uh, uh, you know, you can talk about, you know, the house and the cars and things like that. I, I, this is not me. You know, I'm, I am not the kind of guy who wears what I do on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I hope people realize that because there's too many people out there going, oh, this is, look at what I've done. And I don't, and I, I get it, but I, but that's just not me. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, so. I do these like little manifestation challenges, like a 24 hour challenge or a 48 hour challenge or a 72 hour challenge where I go, what would I like to manifest in the next 24 hours? Or what would I like to manifest in the next 48 hours? What would I like to, and you can do this. This is cool. You try this out, but make it something that you're not likely to encounter. In other words, if I said, well, I'm going to manifest dogs. Well, I have a dog in my house. It's not much, you know, that not much of a stretch. Mm -hmm. So I, and I, I, for some reason, I feel like we talked about this, but maybe we didn't. I don't think we did. I uh, I took this challenge and I was and I also I work as an actor and a producer and director and I also cover film festivals and different things and so I went to a film festival and I had said I want to manifest what what would I not what 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 am I unlikely to encounter you know what 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 I thought goldfish I'm not going to encounter any goldfish in the next <laughs> 20 minutes. I'm going to be at this film festival what's the chance of me running into goldfish so I'm at a film festival and I, I it's now Five o'clock was the cutoff time. And all day, uh, it was a Saturday. From Friday night to Saturday, I didn't encounter anything in goldfish, uh, nothing. And it's about 10 minutes to five. And I'm watching this movie and I'm commenting. And I thought, I like that actor and I like this actress. I'll look him up in IMDb. IMDb. So I do. And I, I get the girl and I look at her and I go, wow, that's, this is interesting. And I'm still holding out for goldfish, but I don't have a clue how it's going to happen. And I get to the guy and I look at the thing and the third movie down was Goldfish. It was the name of the movie. Oh. And I went and it was like, you know, now two minutes to five o'clock. And I went, oh my God, how did I ever, I, you know, I manifested Goldfish. So from that point on for the next two or three days, just about everywhere I went, people would offer me Goldfish snacks. <laughs> I, was, I had a friend, I had a friend come with me and I had told her this and I had a friend of mine come with me she could verify it and we walked into the set the sound stage where we were and the very first thing somebody said to me said oh hey Rex hi how would you like some goldfish and we were like she looked at me and I looked at it. so for that to me is the kind of thing that's cool because if you can manifest a little thing like that you can manifest millions it doesn't matter the size it's just do it so but but here's an important thing a lot of people try and manifest millions of dollars and or a big house or the perfect and they don't believe it so how do you believe it you do what i just did you pick something tiny that you could do in yeah. you, if you want to manifest like by the end of the week you i'd like to manifest 50 more dollars this week to my paycheck i'd like to add 50 more dollars to my income or a hundred dollars whatever you're comfortable with if it's too big of a stretch you won't believe it if it's too little of a stretch it'll bore you and you won't we won't bother with it it right. just the or you, right manifest a, you manifest a piece of what needs to be in place in order, you know, it's not like a million dollars is just going to show up on your doorstep, you know, but there's, you know, there's steps, there's things that you do need to manifest first in order for right. that, in, in order to create the, uh, the vortex, you know, if you right. will, for that to happen. And so, um, you know, so you can manifest the perfect marketing person or you can manifest the, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. what, whatever pieces of the puzzle need to fall into place first in order for that to happen. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, uh, that's wonderful. I appreciate you sharing that. And if you do it, like what we just talked about, um, which what ultimately happens is you develop confidence as a manifester. Yeah. If, if, if 10 weeks from now you've manifested 10 or 20, you know, things, you're now going, wow, look at what I've accomplished in 10 or 20 weeks. In 50 weeks, I manifested these 50 things, you know, so the more you manifest skill comes of doing. And the more we do, the more we become capable of doing, the more confidence you have, 
confidence you should develop along the way of becoming competent. So it, when you get better at something, you feel good about it. You believe you can do it. You're able to do more of it. It's like learning to juggle or play the piano. You know, if you start with the scales, pretty soon you're playing triads and then you chords and whatever. And then pretty soon you're playing so, little simple melodies and songs. And then, and then yeah. pretty soon you're playing a lot, you know, but it, it, it comes through the practice. So practice manifesting. Yes. And that's what most people don't think to do. They go, I'm going to manifest this. And if it doesn't happen, they give it up. Yeah. And that's, you know, for, for me, I believe that, um, you know, a lot of people try to package law of attraction into a one, two, three process. And, uh, you know, I've kind of gotten away from packaging it that way, because I believe that there's actually um, a number of factors that can assist or distract you from being able to manifest the having the belief having the confidence being able to focus having the discipline having patience um you know the there's an at least a, a dozen skills you know yeah. having the motivation um the determination the you know some 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 things are manifested more quickly and easily than other things and um you know, being it being able to um, just, you know, it, it, it's there's a number of values and a number of skills that a person needs to um, strengthen within themselves. And so that's for me, what my, you know, personal growth club is all about is helping people to, uh, to become whole and have this holistic approach. When you're whole and your vibration is strong and you have all of these pieces of, of the puzzle of the virtues and the values that you need to have in place, then you're going to, you're, that's going to determine how fast or slow you manifest is is where your vibration is at and all of the things that that um, you know that that make up your energy vibration. Absolutely, again, absolutely, and and there is a story, and there are multiple stories uh, along this particular line, and one of them is the the woman who said, you know, it's going to be Saturday. I need I need you know a, a beautiful day for a picnic. It's got to be a beautiful day for a picnic. You know, so you're going to manifest this beautiful day, and then Saturday morning she gets up, looks out the window, and she goes, oh, I knew it would rain. You know, <laughs> you, you know exactly. You, that's not believing the end result, you know, you you know, that's, that's trying it, but not actually believing you're going to do it. And, and there's no magic formula for getting past that. That is something that you get past on your own, but that is what stops a lot of people because they do that. And then they give up because they, they don't realize that there's a knack like doing anything. You know, there's a sweet spot. You, you find your own personal sweet spot, and you find where you're good at manifesting and you get better through practice, mm -hmm. through engaging. Yeah. You don't, it's like you didn't learn, you didn't come out of the womb and jump up and do a tap dance. You had to, you know, move and learn to crawl and, you know, then learn to walk and through it, you fell down a bunch of times. And right. had, you, had you not done all of that, you, you wouldn't be walking today. So you had to go through all of it in order to become a walker. So in the same way, you go through all of the disappointments to become a, an excellent manifester. You, you learn. learn. Yeah, you learn. And, you know, people want it otherwise. They go, I should be born this way. Well, you were born this way and you were drained out of it. You know, you were conditioned. <laughs> yeah, you know. from about, you know, age, came out of the womb until age, you know, six. I mean, about 80% of your, your limiting beliefs were in place and you had no choice at but no choice but it, at the same time think about it you popped out of the womb or squeezed out of the womb or pushed out of the womb or yeah. however you got there right and then you went i thirst and what did you get you got fed you go i cried and you needed a change and so it, 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 assuming it's a loving also the benevolent you got your needs met you got everything yeah, you were instant you manifesting was, boom you were getting what you wanted <laughs> You go, ah, and you got what you wanted. <laughs> True. So you, you were good at it. And then you were then at a certain point, they go, oh, oh you can't do that anymore. Uh, uh You can't, you don't get that anymore. No, no, you have to ask. You have to do it this way. You have to know. I said, no cookies. No, not, no, 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 stop, stop. No. And from that point on, we get conditioned out of having instant, almost instant gratification. 
you know, but that's the way it is. You know, you can't, we could sit here and go, crap, that sucks, but that's just how it is. Yeah. That's well, what it is. And we can start to get rid of some of those layers of those limiting beliefs and, and chip away at them. And, um, you know, we're going to be uh, good manifestors in, in certain areas right now. And, you know, use that to build your confidence and, and, and help to take down some of the limiting beliefs in those other areas. If your life sucks, just realize you are brilliantly manifesting a sucky life. And I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean that in a, any pejorative way. I'm saying you're doing something that's working. It's just aimed in the wrong direction. So take the same energy and effort that you do to create something that you don't want and put it towards what you do want. Now, mm -hmm. it's going to seem totally unfamiliar for you at first because you're not used to doing it. You're going to fall down and flop around and scream and cry and whine, the whole thing probably. But ultimately, you can transfer it. You make the shift over. You know, and, and, and I'm going to use an analogy, and, and, and that is, you know, when you drive and you're driving down a road, you know, you're keeping your car straight in the lanes. The lanes are about 11 feet or 12 feet wide or whatever they are. You know, your goal is to stay in, in, in the middle of the lane. And sometimes you drift to the right end. Sometimes you drift to the left. And you go back and forth. You're constantly making these micro adjustments while you drive. You're not actually driving straight. You're going this way and that way and this way and that way and this way. The appearance is that you're driving straight for the most part because unconsciously you're making these adjustments. That's what happens. When you practice manifesting enough, what happens is you master it. And when you master it, it becomes an unconscious, reliable, automatic skill, and you don't even have to think about it. Mm -hmm. you just begin to manifest because that's who you are. You're, you're a professional manifester. You're unconsciously competent. You're able to do this without thinking. Yes, you can think about it, but you're also, that's why people say, you know, I think that, and boom, then it happens. I think this, and then I find it. And then I do this and bang, because they have mastered the process of manifesting. Again, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens through trial and effort. It happens through practice. It happens the same way. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, practice, practice. Yes, you yes. Know? And the same way to become a Carnegie manifester. You have to practice, 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 but you can. And the good news is you can, if you can conceive it and believe it, you can achieve it and accomplish it. And and you will if you stay with it and don't give up. I, give up, it's over. I, I think that on that note, that would be a really good place to close out our law of attraction live show i've been honored and it's been a privilege to be here with you and with your guests who are live excellent questions and and for the replay and the people who watch this all the best manifest make your dreams come true contact victoria contact me love to hear from you love to have you in mind design in the programs but that's your choice and when you're ready meanwhile thank you victoria it's been fabulous it truly has been fabulous it has, Rex. Thank you so much. Uh, you're a world of information, and uh, you know, especially when it comes to law of attraction and attracting and manifesting. So, thank you so much. It was a privilege having you on my show. It, it was a privilege. It's all mine. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Namaste, all. <laughs>